Good afternoon. I'm Deacon Joe Gassman, and welcome to San Pedro Spiritual Development Center's Saints of Healing and Hope. True virtue, or Christian perfection, consists not in great or shining actions, but resides in the heart and in the enlightened through the usual exercise of common and religious duties consistently performed with fidelity and fervor. Such a life has its trials, and often a severer martyrdom than which stands the test of the flames. This we find in the life of the holy servant of God, John Francis Regis, whose feast day we celebrate today. So let us begin with prayer and the words of his devotion to Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So St. John Francis Regis, the great father of the poor, was a Jesuit evangelist and preacher born on January 31, 1597 at Fort Conferte, France, a village in the Diocese of Narboni and Leduc. He is considered a profound preacher, a founder of orphanages, a reformer of improved prison conditions, and he established a lace factory as a form of skilled labor for repentant prostitutes. John Francis was born into a family of some wealth. He was so impressed by his Jesuit educators that he himself wished to join the Society of Jesus and did so at the age of 18. Despite his rigorous academic schedule, he spent many hours in the chapel often to the dismay of his fellow seminarians who really worried about his health. In 1961, or 1961, in 1631, completing his course of studies, he made his third year of his novitiate, during which he was obliged to go to Fort Converte to settle some family affairs. There he spent his time visiting the poor and the sick, catechizing the children every morning, and preaching to the people at least twice a day. He begged for the poor, going through the streets followed by crowds of them and children. This drew many insults and bitter, bitter arguments from his brothers and his friends, but he rejoiced in the humiliations of the cross and answered so that they too became a minister of the gospel as their contempt of him was at last converted into admiration. As everyone discerned his actions in a divine wisdom and zeal which differed from the world's prudence and rejoices in its simplicity which is so often appears contemptible to men. He lived among his kindred as one truly dead to the world, not like those religious persons who, wanting in the spirit of their vocation, sought the earthly comforts among them. Now, following his ordination, he really desired to be a missionary to the Americas. But Father Regis took up missionary work in various French towns. While the former Formal sermons of the day tended toward the poetic. His discourses were plain and familiar, but they revealed a fervor within him that attracted people of all classes. After a clear exposition of the Christian truth, which he had taken for his subject, he closed them with a moral and moving exhortations, delivered with such passion that sometimes his voice and even his strengths failed and with such unction that both preacher and audience often dissolved into tears. And the most hardened left the church 
with their hearts full of compunction. He always drew a vast crowd of all ranks, though principally the poor. A famous preacher was astounded to see the catechisms were admired and the great crowds that they would bring effect conversions while the elegant servant sermons had so few to hear them and produce so little fruit. The reason was the word of God became a two-edged sword in the mouth of Father Regis, who sought it, who spoke it from a heart full of the Spirit of God. Father Regis never refused himself to the rich, but he used to say they would never want confessors, and that the poor destitute part of Christ's flock was his share and his delight. And he thought that he ought to live only for them. So Father Regis spent his whole morning in the confessional, at the altar, and on the pulpit. And his afternoons, he devoted to hospitals and prisons, sometimes even to forget his meals, having once said that he had no leisure to think of them. He begged from door to door for the poor, procured for them physicians, the necessities of the sick, and dressed their most loathsome wounds. He was often seen loaded with bundles of straw. And when laughed at by the children, he told them, that told them he made him look ridiculous, he'd answer, with all my heart, we receive a double advantage when we purchase a brother's relief with our own grace. There was a time that God permitted a storm to be raised against his servant for his trial. For amidst all of his glorious successes, he was accused loudly as a disturber of the peace of, his fa of the families and by his indiscreet zeal. And as a violent man who spared no one his criticisms and satires. The bishop defended the man as long as he could, but finally, tired of the complaints, he wrote a letter to his superior to recall him and send, sending for him gave a severe reprimand, adding that he found himself under the necessity to dismiss Father Regis, who had all along taken no measure for his own justification, answered him with such humility, with such unfeigned love of humiliations in the cross, that the prelate was, was charmed with his virtue. And being undeceived by others in regard to him, he praised him publicly and sent him about his ministry. Through Father Regis longed to work a missionary among the Native Americans in Canada, he was to live out his days working for the Lord in the wildest, most remote and desolate parts of his native France. The Bishop of Viviers, observing the success of Father Regis and communicating with people, sought to draw on his many gifts, especially needed during the prolonged civil and religious strife that was rampant throughout France. Many prelates were absent, and priest neglect. The people had been deprived of the sacraments for 20 years or more because of a general indifference toward religion. For three years, Father Regis traveled throughout the diocese conducting ministries and missions in advance of the visiting bishop. He succeeded in converting many people and bringing many others back to religious observances. His preaching missions earned him a reputation as a saint. Upon entering a town in St. Andre, one man came upon a large crowd in front of the church. He was told that the people were waiting for the saint who was coming to preach a mission. The last four years of his life, he spent preaching and organizing social services, especially for prisoners, the sick and the poor. In the autumn of 19... 1640, 
Father Regis sensed his days were coming to a conclusion. He settled some of his affairs and prepared for the end by continuing to do what he did so well, speaking to the people about God who loved them deeply. Father worked intensely with neglect until suffering from exhaustion, he died at the age of 43. On December 31, he spent most of the day with his eyes on the crucifix. That evening, when he died, his final words were, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You know, unlike many famous preachers, he isn't really remembered for his golden-tongued oratory. What people who listened to him heard was his own fervent faith. And it had a powerful effect on them. And I hope that we can recall some of the homilist and priests and preachers who impressed us in the same way. So that more importantly for us, we can also be remember the ordinary people, our neighbors and friends, whose faith and goodness touched us and brought us to a deeper faith. That is the calling we must follow. Father Regis was canonized by Pope Clement XII on April 5, 1737. He is the patron saint of lacemakers, medical social workers, and illegitimate children. Let us pray. O oh God, whose priest, St. Francis, John Francis Regis, a friend of the poor, the sick, the imprisoned, and the wayward, who eagerly desired to evangelize to the peoples of North America, grant, we ask, that we who serve you in his place may be filled with the same spirit of zeal to speak the truth with a fervent faith from our hearts and to humbly serve the poor the sick and the imprisoned, and the forgotten within our communities. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Saints and Healings of Hope. And we invite you to join us on Friday for the Mysteries of the Church. May God continue to bless you and your families in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.